And let me see what else we got here. Um, I guess I'll go into this bottoms. So bottoms is another one that um I went to check out. Um, I saw it, it was playing, it actually went wider in some places, so it was playing at my local theater. And I uh, took a chance to see it. I actually saw it twice. Um, I, and I blame that too on me just not knowing what kind of film this was because I will admit the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, that, that was it, you know. Because um, you know, sometimes when I hear rave reviews, that kind of makes my expectations a certain way. And plus, like I said, I didn't know what kind of film this was, but you know, then I actually found out what kind of film it was. And the second time I watched it, I definitely was more relaxed and was able to, to you know, pick up on the, the humor a lot more and stuff like that. But um, this story is directed by um, Emma Seligman. I don't know what else she's worked on. This might be her. Um, there's another film she's got credited for 2020 called Shiva Baby. And she's a Canadian director, film writer. So she actually wrote this along with uh, Rachel Sunette, one of the stars of this film. And Rachel Sunette stood out to me because she was in... Um, Hold up, I got too many windows open. <laughs> she was in the film Bodies, which I didn't like a whole lot, but I recognized like she really stood out to me, her character and her performance. And I was like, yo, she's she's going to be one, you know. So she helped, you know, write this film Bottoms. This film is about an unpopular best friends, PJ and Josie, start a high school fight club to meet girls and lose their virginity. They soon find themselves in over their heads when the most popular students start beating each other up in the name of self defense. So, um, <laughs> That premise is a little off, you know, just rating it. So, so in this film, uh, our main characters are PJ and Josie, played by Rachel Sonnet and Ayo um, Edibiri. Uh, you might recognize her from The Bear. We've also okay. got Ruby Cruz in this. We got Nicholas um, Galazzini, um, Havana Rose Liu, and uh, Kai Jordan Gerber, and Marshawn Lynch, who's amazing in this, man. We also got Miles Fowler. Uh, let me see if I can find anyone else that uh, stood out to me. Um, it's a lot of high school um, kids and stuff. We also got Wayne Perry, who plays the principal in this film. Uh, let me see. There's somebody else that was uh, really cool. Um, but but pretty much, man, this thing is kind of like a comedy satire. It's almost like if you took something like Revenge of the Nerds and flipped it on their head, on its head. You know, instead of the so you got these two girls that they're they're gay and um and they are um attracted to they've got but they both got people they're interested in in the high school but they're kind of like they say they, they call themselves untalented gays so they're just kind of under the radar they're kind of the nerds that everyone in the school looks down on and this school is like i said it's hyper real so so that's what that's what took me a while to adjust to man the satire it's kind of a a flipped on its head world you know what i'm saying so so, so they're kind of doing the the um the, the, it's, it's the, the scumbag stuff man it, the, the way they start this fight club is for nefarious reasons but you kind of give them a pass because you're rooting for them but, but back in the day they, they would have been like the, the porky's characters or the revenge of the okay, nerds characters, okay, just trying okay. to get with some girls and stuff and, and then craziness ensues and in the process their club actually becomes something health, helpful that unites these girls empowers them and, and, and but things don't work out you know they kind of get exposed you know in the process of this and you got to deal with that but but there's some cool comedy and social commentary you know throughout this thing man you know what i'm saying like like because like like i said the first time i saw it it was just me in a the theater maybe that was a difference so then the second time i saw it it was a bit of a crowd man and, and we were having a good time man just cracking up at the jokes and like it it, it 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 looks at a lot of situations in an interesting way there's also um um dealing with like high school sports and, and and how people you know hold these these high school football players and put them on a pedestal how the uh the captain of the team can kind of do no wrong you know what i'm saying in the community so so there's a lot of like little social um situations that are re-examined through the eyes of these characters man and, and even to the point too where i think our characters they're adorable man but but there's also a thing where you're looking at them go through the motions of this and there's plenty of moments for them to come clean and and and, and call it off but they don't they just lean into it it's almost like you start telling them a lie you got to keep maintaining it <laughs> it's <gets> crazier <laughs> and crazier and then like Marshawn Lynch steals this damn movie man he's he's kind of a, a teacher that's in there so, so in order for them to get um uh, permission to pull their club in they need a 
administrator or teacher or whatever to oversee their club as is going on. Oversee a fight club? Him. Well, it's the what well, they don't know is going to be a fight club at okay. first. They say it's a self defense club. That's how they get around it. It's okay. a self defense club. So, so in a way, it, it, and and because they start this club, that their idea is like we'll get all the hot girls to come in. There's even a scene where the first day of class they come in, and it's like, damn it, there's a lot of girls here, but they're all sixes. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, so and eventually the the two girls that they are interested in they do come in so 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 it kind of puts them in a position to be able to be around them and get physical with them and and, and befriend them and, and you know what i'm saying so so it's, but 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 marshall lynch is brought in because they can't get this club approved unless they have a teacher there watching it and man he's off the chain dude he's just it's not he's he's who he is like i've never seen a person get by in life just being exactly who they are and they just get so many opportunities to get more popular every day like like one of the funny things this past weekend football season restarted so the nfl had him hanging out with amish people as a segment what? on the episode and he's marshall lynch and it's just as crazy as you think it could be he's saying the wildest stuff so so i'm looking into the making of this thing and uh one of the things about it they said that he damn near improvised every line and, and <laughs> so basically they told him what had to be done in the scene and, and he's improvising with ayo and, and rachel and it's it's hilarious man stay for the blooper reel at the end of this i will tell you that there's a blooper reel for all the characters and and some of the best stuff didn't even make the film it's, it's crazy but but he fits in so well man he, he's actually going through a divorce <laughs> so in a way i think it's him it's like, well, damn, at least I'm not suffering in silence. I have something to keep my mind off of this. And he ends up in this fight club. But but like I said, it's it's, it's bullshit. But they actually <laughs> end up teaching the girls self-defense. They just go to go to every after school every day and just beat each other up until they actually start getting good at defending themselves and throwing punches and stuff. And, and it goes from there, man. It's, it's a wild movie. It's hard to summarize it all up in one thing but i think this one will become one of those cult hits that people revisit over and over you're going to start seeing like memes and merch and stuff as it starts getting seen by more people and infecting and, and getting injected into to the culture man because the thing about it too is like um you know one of the things that i've seen in the write-ups about it was just a queer representation but like i said these are not your typically attractive um uh, gay uh women you know what i'm saying okay. especially a bunch of the people that are represented in the fight club there's all kinds of you know you've got you know so-called lipstick lesbians you've got uh people that are are you are, you know what I'm saying that are kind of walking the line it's like are you yeah, yeah. Uh, not being able to be defined by typical gender you know criteria and stuff like that and and, and it's kind of cool to see these characters just exist and not that not be the big um setup because i think some of the write-ups on this are doing it a disservice in that department because like i said i was expecting something totally different but essentially you just got to like i said you're just putting that um binge of the nerds kind of thing on its head yo and, and honestly What's interesting about re-examining Revenge of the Nerds, that movie was pretty problematic, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in adult eyes, but also in flipping this, where the nerds are these two girls, they didn't get rid of the problematic elements, and now with us as audiences being more aware, those things stand out now, and I think there's some good commentary in that, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. But, it's a good time, man. I really, I really did enjoy this film, man. It's probably gonna be, uh, you know, it might make my my end of the year list, man. But yeah, I'll probably definitely maybe take a chance and um, you know, once it comes out digital, go ahead and buy a copy. It's something I feel like I could throw on in the background and and start just picking up. Cause like I said, it's got a lot of layers. It's not a film that's beating you in the head. It's subtle, you know. But there's some things going on, especially like I said, the second time, like I was laughing a lot more the second time like as waves of things were hitting me i'm like oh wow that that is wild You're like that's you know it's just and the way some of these adults were acting like i said man it it definitely has a set satire campy vibe to it you know this is okay. not a real world it's not, it, it, you know they, there's um the, the, the way the the main guy of uh, the, the football guy he's a trip dude it's crazy and then he has a sidekick that's just, just one of those assistant pimp kind of guys just just, oh, okay, okay. just gonna do anything for them and, it's wild, it's wild, cool time. yeah yeah it's wild bro it's it's it's, it's, a, it's an interesting film man it's crazy but, but also i just like the people involved man like, like i said i think rachel sonnet she's on her way she's gonna be a comedy 
kind of hit, you know, and, and AO is just in everything right now. She's great to watch. And Marshawn Lynch, if he don't start getting more movie work, I would rather have him been in the Expendables because it's about to come out to 50 Cent because I could just imagine what he would have been doing in there. Cutting up yeah, the I kind of I, I I hate that Terry Crews is in it. You know, <laughs> yeah. hey, Terry Crews is like my favorite, one of my favorite characters in that, um, mm-hmm. in that franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah, I would definitely say check out Bottoms if you can, man. I always like seeing stuff like this if I can in the theaters, you know, just to support and hopefully get more of it made. You yeah. know, but I, but I think they're doing all right uh, with what they got so far, considering you know it's a small budget film and you know the buzz is good for them. 